Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 24th of November, and if you celebrate it, I hope you had an awesome Thanksgiving. As always, I have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week, so I dived into what is the well-architected framework. It's been completely updated, so I thought this was a really good time to go through what it is and how I can use its guidance. And then I dived into, we hear about generative AI and how we make that work with our own content. And there's a whole bunch of terms like RAG and vectors and embeddings and semantic search. So in this video, it's about 30 minutes, but I go through all of the terms and what they actually mean for the technology and why they're so important. I don't see this very often, but I would say this is a must watch for everyone. It's really important to understand these concepts because it will make a lot of the different generative AI things actually make sense to how they work. So on to what's new. Now with Container Insights, remember that is the curated experience for gathering certain metrics, exposing it as these certain nice dashboards and guidance. It now supports syslog collection for your AKS clusters. So that would mean it would maybe be useful for troubleshooting, maybe for displaying certain information in workbooks. Now it's not enabled by default, because remember it's all extra data going into your log analytics workspace, which means more money, but it's really easy to enable through the portal or CLI or PowerShell. It's currently rolling out. It should be everywhere by January, 2024. But hey, if I want it, if it's useful to me, I can now get the syslog from my Linux based um, container hosts. Azure Static Web Apps now has .NET 8 support. So that's the brand new version of .8. Remember the Azure Static Web Apps are all about hosting that pre-rendered content in this geographically distributed set of hosts. However, if I have requirements for server-side compute, well then it can hook into managed Azure functions very simply where they can do the processing. So now those managed Azure functions can hook in and leverage .NET 8. And then Azure App Configuration now has a Kubernetes provider. So remember, Azure App Configuration is all about a centralized store for the configuration for my services. Think of key value pairs of data, which can include references to Azure Key Vault if I have secrets. So this enables me to separate out my configuration from an actual app instance, having these manual configuration files. Well, now with this provider, I can automatically expose that configuration into my pods. Now that would include config maps being created and exposed to the pods and secrets for those referenced Azure Key Vault secrets from those key value pairs stored in the Azure app configuration. So it just makes it a lot easier to now integrate that configuration with my AKS, my Kubernetes based applications. And then Azure Backup for AKS has gone GA. So this is the idea of both the cluster configuration, but also if I have application data that is stored on persistent um, CSI based Azure disks, it can back up and protect that as well. And I can restore it to clusters in different subscriptions if I need to. Now obviously, if I have infrastructure as code and I've got good DevOps processes and I've got um, my stateful data backed up other ways, this may not be as critical but it's good to have it as an option. On the storage side, so encryption at the host is now available for premium SSD V2s. Remember, they are the ones with lower latency, separate IOPS and throughput that I can dynamically change and my ultra disks. So encryption at host is all about the idea. Those disks are encrypted at rest anyway in the backend storage, but then on the host that they're connected to, there's a cache file. And also if I think about the communication between what is the abstracted storage account and the host, how is that encrypted? So when I turn on encryption at host, what it's gonna use is whatever key is used to encrypt the source disk, be it customer managed key or platform managed key, it will use the same key to encrypt the cache on the host and also will encrypt it during the transit. So now I have complete control over that. It already, had it for standard SSD, standard HDD, um, 
and the premium SSD. So it's just now adding it for the V2 and the Ultra. Azure NetApp Files now in Gov regions has the standard networking features. So this is things like NSG and UDR support, 64,000 routes, site site VPN, express route, virtual WAN, private link server endpoints, all of those things is now going to work. And also for Azure NetApp Files, but just in regular regions, the user and group quota management has gone GA. So this is the ability for SMB, NFS, and dual type volumes, I can set a default user quota, but also individual user quotas that can override that quota. And then for NFS volumes only, I can also use group-based quotas. So again, a default group quota, and then individual group quotas that can override that. So that is now GA. On the database side, so the Cosmos DB CDC for analytical store has gone GA. Remember, the whole point of the analytical store is it automatically synchronizes with the regular transactional store. That transactional store is based on the rows, whereas the analytical store is more formatted for this column storage, which is better for analytics, and it avoids me having workload happening against that transactional store. With a CDC that change data capture, anytime there is an insert, an update, a delete, when that happens, it's then going to go and send that data via a feed to whatever wants to consume it. So in this case, hey, that CDC is now available for the Cosmos DB analytical store to go and send against, for example, Azure Synapse Link, Azure Data Factory, which can be really useful in those extract transform load scenarios. And then Cosmos DB now has time travel huh? Um, for Synapse Link. So all this means is for both the NoSQL and the MongoDB APIs, I can go back at a specific point in time and see what the analytical store looked like. This could be useful if maybe I want to look at two points in time and see what had changed. Maybe I just need to go back and see where it was because I've had some logical data corruption. So I can think data audit scenarios, trend analysis, fixing stuff. Uh, that could be a really nice feature. So that's GA. And then PostgreSQL Flexible now has server logs in preview. So basically this just means I can set a retention for those server logs from one to seven days and now it will go and save those to a file and I can go and download them from the portal, from the CLI. It might be useful for troubleshooting, seeing certain activities um, on my server to help pinpoint things a little bit easier. And then PG Vector 0.5.1 extension is available. That second video I said I created this week where I talked about embeddings and vectors, that would explain why this is important. It's now all about the idea for PostgreSQL to easily integrate with Azure AI services to go and send it to data, to run it through an embedding model, to get a vector back that it can then store. But then also it has a new nearest neighbor, the ability to search and find the data that's closest to it in a very efficient and very large scale manner. So that adds a number of great capabilities. And then SQL migration now has SKU recommendations. So this is the extension for Azure Data Studio. It will now recommend a right-sized Azure SQL MI instance or SQL Server running in an IaaS virtual machine. Um, and it's just gonna do that based on the observed performance, the observed utilization um, that it's seeing. And it will also now recommend premium SSD V2 disks if they're the best match. Speaking of which, um, the portal-based version of the database migration services is now GA. So yes, there's the extension for Azure Data Studio. Yes, there's things like, hey, the CLI, the PowerShell. But now from the portal, I can go and create those migration jobs, um, see all the different data, help manage them, etc. Uh, also, the Azure Database Migration Services added support for the schema migration. So that would enable me to, hey, go and migrate schema objects, schemas, tables, store procedures um, as part of the data migration. Miscellaneous. So this is EA customers only, but now the files that it generates, 
It will include details around the part numbers that actually match the ones that are printed on the invoice. So it's just, it's a better um, seamless experience between my invoice and the data that's actually output from the cost management experiences. And then customer managed key for backup vaults is in preview. So I can already have a customer managed key for recovery services vaults. Remember, they were the original vaults that were also used for things like um, Azure Site Recovery. Backup vaults is a newer offering used for newer services um, like Blob and Azure Disks and Postgres um, SQL. So now I can have my own key in Azure Key Vault to encrypt that data. And that was it. As always, I hope this was useful. And until the next video, take care.